This is probably the best filter I've ever used. As a professional artist, I've used so many of these and the filling process takes so long. And look how fast and accurate this is. I'm literally filling this in real time. I drew this artwork and I need to color it. And the best way to do it is using Clip Studio Paint Fill Tool. However, this isn't your old regular paint fill tool. The fill tool in Clip Studio Paint has a lot more features that were tailored made for us artists to use in our art, making the process of both filling and cell shading a lot easier. So we can get results like this just by using selections and fill tool. The easiest way for me to showcase the fill tool and explain this extensive list of features is by showing you. Make a new layer under your line art or sketch and let's get into it. The first thing you want to do is to pay attention to the preset sub tools inside of the fill tool. These four tools are different ways to operate the fill tool. Refer only to editing layer means your fill tool will only pay attention to the selected layer, which means if you use the fill tool on a layer below your line or sketch, it will fill the entire canvas and will require you to directly fill the line layer. Making it the ideal fill tool to fill backgrounds and simple color filling for entire layers. The classic fill tool really, the one that pops to mind when you think fill tool. Refer to other layers is where the magic starts to happen. In Clip Studio Paint, you have different layer types such as draft layers, lock layers, text layers, etc. Using the Refer to Other Layers subtool tells the fill tool to pay attention to those other layer types. Let's use this cute bunny as an example before we go to our drawing. By default, using this tool will make sure the fill tool pays attention to all the layers. So now when we color fill the bunny, the fill tool will make sure to not go over where we have our lines, even though we are coloring in the layer below our lines. Which is great, however, in trying to color the body of the bunny and referring to all layers, we accidentally didn't fill the whole body and we got stopped where the circle intersects with the body. To fix that, we'll go over to the Tool Property window. If you can't see the Tool Property window, you can open it by going to the Window tab and finding the Tool Property option. In the Tool Property window we have just opened, look for the option that is called Refer to Multiple. This tells our fill tool what layers it should pay attention to. Click this icon, it looks a bit like a lighthouse, it's a reference layer. And then back in the layer window with your line art layer being your current highlighted layer, click the same icon from the top bar of the layer window, and it will make that layer you currently have highlighted as a reference layer. It will also mark the layer itself using the reference layer icon, so you know at a glance which is your current reference layer. Now that we have set both our fill tool to refer to the reference layer and we selected which layer is our reference layer, we can go back to our color layer and fill the body of the bunny. As you can see now, the fill tool only pays attention to the bunny's line art and we have successfully filled the bunny's body. This can also be done with entire folders full of line art layers. So if we have the circle in the same folder as the bunny and set the entire folder as a reference layer, they will still intersect. It is particularly useful when you have multiple separate line art layers like this, as Clip Studio Paint Fill Tool will refer to all of them. Speaking of multiple line art parts, we can also utilize the Layer in Folder option. That way we can have our color fill layer in the same folder as all of the line art parts. And when we color fill, the fill tool will act as if all the line art layers in that folder are a merge reference layer. We can now set our own drawings line art as a reference layer and use the fill tool on the color layer below it. It's worth mentioning that if you wish to color fill on the same layer as your line art, you can do so without setting a reference layer. Simply use the selected layer option instead. This will let the fill tool act as if the layer you currently have highlighted is the reference layer without marking it as one. Another useful aspect of the fill tool is the ability to exclude specific types of layers when you are filling. For example, if you have your sketch layer in the same folder as your line art and you have the folder set as a reference folder like we have established earlier, you might run into an issue similar to this. This happens because the layer of your sketch is in the reference folder, however there is no need to sacrifice your comfort. The fill tool in Clip Studio Paint has the ability to ignore specific types of layers you tell it to. Set your sketch layer as a draft layer, right next to the reference layer icon, with the icon that looks like a scribbling pen. After doing that you can go over to your tool property window, and under the exclude section you can highlight the same pencil icon that has a small X next to it. Now you can go ahead and fill in the color the same way you did earlier. It will ignore all the lines within layers that you have marked as a draft layer. This can also be used to ignore text layers, locked layers and the layers you are currently highlighting as well. Going back to our original drawing, I am going to try and fill in the bucket. However, since I have a gap here in my line art, it overflows and fills the hat as well. That isn't something that I want. At our bunny line art we have a similar issue where I want the inner ears of the bunny to be pink and the rest of the body to be a different color. 
To solve this issue, the Fill tool has a unique and splendid feature in the tool property window called Close Gap. Enabling it lets us have a slider with boxes next to it. The boxes are the default amount of pixels that the Fill tool will try to automatically estimate. The first being 1 pixel and the last 20 pixels. You can also adjust it to a custom number of your choosing by clicking the little arrow here and writing down your own number. After some back and forth playing with the numbers in the closed cap feature in the fill tool, we have successfully colored the inner ear of the bunny and the rest of its face without any overflowing issues. It has also worked with the paint bucket we earlier tried to fill and had it overflow to the hat. The Close Cap feature is also an extremely useful tool in the cases where you use textured brushes for line art. It will help you automatically fill more unique line arts. After coloring the bunny's body blue, I wanted to try and color the bunny different colors to see if any of them fit any better. However, I don't want to click all of the different body parts to change the color of each. Instead, you can easily change the color in one click by going to the Tool Property window and disabling the Apply to Connected Pixel Only checkbox that is on by default. Now when I click to fill the bunny's blue body, the fill tool will go to all of the blue parts and change them regardless if they are connected to each other or not. That way I can easily change between colors and decide which one I like the most. The same thing can apply to my drawing as well. This way I don't need to click on every single part of the gauntlet and instead I can just click it once. However, I ran into an issue when I was color filling my drawing. Something you might have ran into before while trying to use the old school fill tool in other programs which is if you're like me and you like to sketch soft lines in your line art, the fill tool won't paint over them correctly. To fix that, we can go again into the tool property window and locate the tolerance slider. Bumping up the tolerance slider to the right will increase the number of shades which our fill tool will determine as the same. You can also click the number to input your own number. The tolerance determines the range of colors that the fill tool will consider the same color, meaning it will let our light gray lines slide and it won't be considered part of the line art. Bumping up our tolerance has made it so the fill tool ignored the lines on our head and has filled it correctly. The same method has also worked on our hair. Yet we came into another issue where even with high tolerance number, the fill tool doesn't fill the lines in our drawing space as we want, because there is a double line there, and filling it in with high tolerance causes the fill to overflow. Another great feature to fix this issue is the area scaling property you might have already noticed in the property window. The area scaling increases the number of pixels that are added extra on top of what the fill would normally fill. For example, if we take a circle and fill it in without any area scaling, it will just fill. However, if we fill it, for example, with a high area scaling, it will fill a certain amount of pixel outside the fill area. And it worked! Increasing the area scaling has helped us fill the face correctly. It is also worth mentioning that the area scaling feature has multiple modes of filling that affect how the shape of the fill will look, along with the filling to the darkest pixel. Here are quick examples of how each one looks. Fill to darkest pixel is useful because each line you draw has anti-aliasing on it. These few pixels of lower opacity pixels from the same color you drew it, they make the line look smoother. Using to darkest pixel mode in the area scaling makes it so that regardless of how big your area scaling is, it will never go past the darkest pixel of that line. For example, I'll set my area scaling to a really high number and then feel it will go beyond that line. Using to darkest pixel mode in the area scaling makes it so that regardless of how big your area scaling is, it will never go past the darkest pixel of that line. It will scale the fill only up to that darkest pixel, making it a mega useful mode when using the area scaling feature. Next are the round and rectangular modes. These usually change the shape of the fill to be a bit more angular or round. It's sometimes a bit hard to see the difference, but it's worth swapping between them depending on what you're feeling. I found that textured lines such as pencil lines, angular seems to work better with, while the round mode is great with sharper, crisper, uniform lines. Last but not least in the property window is the fill up to vector path. This is a great way to mark your own extra guidelines to limit the feeling. For example, we can have this circle, and we want to fill half of it with a wavy looking fill, but we don't want any line art on it. So we can make a new vector layer and draw a wavy line on it. And then with the fill up to vector path checkmark active in our tool property window on the layer underneath, we can color fill the circle. Then we will turn off the vector layer we made earlier and now we have a fill without any lines. And close and fill is a unique subtool of the fill tool that is used for quick and efficient filling. As it acts similarly to a lasso selection tool and will try to fill anything inside of its enclosed selected area. 
And what's unique about it compared to the other fill tools is that you can simply make a color fill layer underneath the line art layer and have a multiple sectioned line art such as this apple and it will close and fill all of it without requiring you to click and fill each section separately. While the Paint Unfilled Area subtool has its own unique method of working, as it operates similarly to Close and Fill. Instead of having a selection tool that lets you lasso around the art to fill it quickly, you can instead go ahead and use a brush-like fill that lets you draw over the line art, and it will fill it in thematically based on the places you went over with your brush. Of course, you can use this on a layer underneath of the line art. There is also a unique property for both the Close and Fill subtool we discussed about earlier, and the Paint Unfilled Area we have just shown. That is the target color part in the tool property window. Since there are a lot of these targets, we are going to do a quick lightning round explaining what most of these do in a short and concise way. From top to bottom, all colors, it will target all the colors that are already present while you fill. Only transparent, it will only fill the transparent area in the drawing. Area surrounded by transparency, fills anything in the canvas, anything outside the canvas won't be filled. Only black, will color only the black parts of the artwork. Only white and transparent means it will only fill the transparent and white areas. Areas surrounded by transparency and white will fill anything but white and transparency outside the canvas area. And now that we have a good grasp on the fill tool, we can go ahead and fill in our drawing, and after we finish filling it, we can even make an overlay layer on top of our filling and use selection tools to shade those areas. We want to shade by filling the selected areas as well. We can do a similar thing for the background to make it a bit more colorful. And of course, finish it off with some lighting. I hope you found this quick tutorial helpful. It was part of the Clip Studio Paint Monthly Tips. If you want to see more like it and other drawing videos, click on my name at the bottom.